your financial advisors. A registered investment advisor, this show does not intend to provide personalized investment advice through this broadcast and does not represent that the securities or services discussed are suitable for any investor. Investors are advised not to rely on any information contained in the broadcast in the process of making a full informed investment decision. This is your money, your wealth on Talk Radio 760 KFMV. Now, here's Joe Anderson and Big Al Clopine. Hey, it's a little bit after the hour. Good morning, everyone. The show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Joe Anderson, Big Al, hanging out for the next few hours, talking financial stuff, financial planning, taxes, investments, Social Security, I don't know, health care. Hey, Alan, check this out. Yeah, what do you got, Joe? Health care expenses for retired couples hit record $260,000. Oh, okay. That's, I think, referring to that stat. If you're, if you're 65 years old, right, a couple, that's what they would expect to pay in medical expenses over their lifetime. Do you read this article? No, but you're just that wise. Well, because it, it was 240 and then 250, so I figured that's what they were referring to. A 65 year old couple retiring this year will need an estimate 260000 to cover health care costs in retirement. Now, that's a married couple, right? A couple. A couple. Okay. Well, I, when did you start calling single people couples? <laughs> a 65-year-old couple. Sorry. You're not listening. I'm not paying any attention. You are not paying attention. This is a very scary stat. Okay. 260, Alan. 6% increase. So what do we run ours at? 5.7. So we probably got to increase. Because when we do financial plans for our clients, we use healthcare at about a 5.7% clip. Yeah, that means inflation rate, because a typical inflation rate has been around 3% historically. We use about 37 just to be conservative, but medical, you're right, we do about 57 because that's what it's been growing at. 6% last year. Um, this is according to Fidelity's retiree health care cost estimate that was released on Tuesday. Okay. Hot. You are, Hot off the press. You are right on it. Hot off the press. So um, we have a Medicare webinar on purefinancial.com. Um, so a lot of times people think that Medicare is going to cover most of their expenses. And I don't know why we're starting the show out talking about Medicare and healthcare expenses, but this is the first thing that I saw. So I thought, what the heck, let's go with it. That was the first article on your pile? It is. And yeah. I got a big stack of boring stuff. Oh, wow. <laughs> so Stay this, tuned. <laughs> this, is, this is really good stuff. Oh, But man, it's confusing. You know, you got Medicare Part A, Part B, Part D. Got Medigap. I mean, it's you like, gotta you gotta take a class to figure this out, right? And why why is that, Joe? Because it's complicated. It's healthcare, right? <laughs> why does it have to be complicated? I don't know why. I don't know why. I I have no idea. But um, what you would probably want to do is get educated. If you want to get um, an hour fill of Medicare, go to purefinancial.com and check out that webinar. That webinar, you and Dr. Katie. Yeah, Dr. Katie Boltava. Yeah, she's um, what is she the most authoritative. Yeah, she's the she's the one of the foremost experts of Medicare in the United States. Yes, she is. And she since sh Medicare is only in the United States, that's a good thing to be. So, 2015 Fidelity said research um, showed that the number of HSA accounts in the U.S. had increased by 22 percent. Really? So, um, HSAs they've been around for a while, um, and what an HSA is health savings account plan. So, it's a high deductible health care plan. Uh, that you can contribute dollars pre-tax and then have that money grow tax deferred. And then if you use it for qualifying medical expenses, it's tax free. Tax free, yeah. So it's a you know, it's a double dipper. So you contribute each year and you get a tax deduction and then if you spend the money in the account for medical, it's non taxable. Fidelity also said that long term care expenses could affect some seventy percent of Americans who reach age sixty five in the next five years. Seventy percent it will affect um, really okay. yeah. And if you take a look at the average cost of a long-term care facility here in Southern California, you know you're looking at probably hundred thousand bucks. Yeah, or, or certainly approaching that. Yeah. I mean, I guess it depends on where you want to stay. Sure. Right. Uh, you want Ocean View? <laughs> well, Ocean View is going to cost you a lot more than hundred grand. Santa Monica, Ocean View. <laughs> yeah, that's going to cost you a little bit more than that. I suppose. You get a nice place in Santee for probably hundred. Oh, grand. a little bit less. Hot. Yeah. yeah, Lakeside, that's cheap. Oh, so um, we're doing um, and look at this segue. Uh, segue. Okay. We're doing another webinar on long-term care. Oh boy. <laughs> it's coming up next month. These things are so interesting. I can't wait. It's a it's an hour long Discussion speech on on long term, long -term care. care. 
And if you're still interested, go to purefinancial.com. <laughs> right. I swear, I just I sent that email, not even an email out. I don't know how it, I don't know, our marketing department is just on it. Yeah. And we got like 200 people signed up. It just went out on Thursday. Really? Yeah. So uh, apparently it is an interesting topic. It's a need. It's yeah, a there's need. a need. Yeah. Well, I mean, if you think of it, it's like, all right, well, you don't, it, and it's not about long-term care insurance. Well, I mean, we're going to talk about long-term care insurance, of course, but right. the long-term care is like, what is it? You know, is it skilled care? Is it, you know, do you need a facility? Is it in-home care? And there's all sorts of different things. And you can go out of pocket. You can use an insurance policy. Maybe use friends and family or whatever. It's just to make sure that you have a plan in place. Yeah, I think it, that's the key. I mean, it's not that you have to get long-term care insurance, but you, you certainly need, need to have a plan. Because it's crazy expensive. And, and, Joe, I think a lot of people don't realize that Medicare does not cover long-term care stays. Right. Not yeah, maybe what sixty ninety days or something, something like that. Something like that, and, but and not, not ongoing. Up to ninety dollars. Mm-hmm. Um, so we'll get into the details and the, the the weeds, if you will, on this webinar that we're having. Got it. Really excited to Cannot speak. Cannot wait. Yes. Next month. Yeah, next month. Next month. September. Each month we're trying to do yeah something to educate our listeners. Okay. Well, that's I I commend that. Yeah. Another thing that we're doing. This is just a pitch <laughs> right off the gates. Is Jeez. that we're doing this? It sounds like a commercial. It, it is, I guess. It's <laughs> Road to Retirement. It's okay. a whole new spiel we're doing. Okay. Uh, so, this is a lunch and learn. Um, and it's basically an hour long, maybe 45 minutes, um, just finishing up the final touches on the presentation. Okay. On uh, basically what you need to know um, before you enter retirement. So, how much money do you need? We'll talk about Social Security. We'll talk about the taxation of Social Security. We talk about the tax um, efficiency or inefficiencies of most pe- people's retirement plan. Uh, we get into investments, how the portfolio should be structured, and then estate planning. Uh, so covering all the different key areas of financial planning. So we're starting this every uh, last Wednesday of the month. We're going to do like a little lunch and learn. So uh, if people want to learn more about that, you can always go to our website at purefinancial.com, purefinancial.com. And I, that'll be in our San Diego office, right? That is, yes, only in the San Diego office. Yes. And then in our L.A. office in Orange County, stay tuned. Yeah, something's coming your way, and it's yes, going to be good. It's going to be awesome. It's going to be so good. <laughs> I just get stuck doing this stuff. It's like, okay, well, here, now you're doing this thing. I said, perfect. I love doing this stuff. <laughs> you do. You're good at it, too. Yeah, I like to speak. Yeah. Um, so I kind of came out hot. You did. So, so, <laughs> yes. so, no, just, just, I, I have no more content. I'm, we got two hours to go. I, 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 you, you went through the whole stack. Everything's done. <laughs> I'm just, just, I, I know. I just like got out of your way. It's like when you're on a roll, I might as well just sit there and listen. Oh, yeah, I got this interesting article here, too. I'm going to talk about a little bit later. Uh, the death of traditional retirement planning. Okay. Which I found somewhat interesting because of how people plan or how maybe advisors help their clients plan for retirement. Right. There's certain assumptions that they make. Um, and those assumptions, and, uh, and I'm not talking assumptions when it comes to tax rates or inflation or rate of return. It's just the assumption of what people think about retirement. Right. And so I thought that was kind of interesting. So we can talk a little bit more about that because okay. a lot more people are retiring or f- forcing retirement. Sure. Or facing, I should say. Yeah. And some people are forced. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, what, 10,000 people per day. Per day. I love turning, that statistic. Are turning 70 and a half. No, and, 65. Well, it's same. Same stat. Well, has it been five years already? Yeah. Maybe next year we can say that. No, we can say it right now. How they, many people? Uh, uh, people could have died. All right, 9,000. <laughs> yeah, 9,900. 9, per day are turning 70 and a half. Uh, 10,000 per day are turning 65. So that's the baby boomer generation, by the way. That is the oldest baby boomer right now is turning 70 and a half. What in July? Yeah, July 1st is when that started. So, the, hence the uh, yeah, we got uh, 65, of course, is that's a common date that people retire or at least think about retiring. And 70 and a half is when you have to take your required minimum distribution out of your IRA and 401k. So, you, you have to start pulling money out of the account, which means you got to start paying taxes on those dollars. Stick around. Uh, because we have, um, I got a couple more things up my sleeve here. I got four tax friendly ways to pay for long term care insurance. I got the five deadly sins of investing. You don't want to miss that. Okay. I got 10 retirement mistakes baby boomers are making right now. Okay. And then um, we can switch it up here. Here's the eight best foreign retirement destinations. Oh, really? Okay. So there's a lot of people now, and we're getting emails, and we're getting your calls of, hey, you know, if I become an expat, 
You know, if I want to move to Costa Rica, sure. What's that? What like? does that look like? Yeah. How am I taxed? What does healthcare look like? And it's funny how we're seeing more and more of this. Yeah, we are. I don't know are. if that has anything to do with this election coming up or not. <laughs> it's possible. <laughs> I uh, I actually know somebody that just went to Peru and and for the purpose of investigating whether they want to retire there. So I wonder if that's on your list. We'll see. I don't know. I haven't looked yeah. at it yet. Yeah. Could be. Let's see. <laughs> Peru. No, <laughs> didn't, make, didn't the make the list. Didn't make the list. It was probably the ninth. All right. Hey, we got to take a quick break, but I want everyone to go to purefinancial.com. We got this long-term care um, webinar coming up if you want to register for that. You don't have to go to it live. All you got to do is register. We will send you the replay, but you do have to register. Uh, we also have this Lunch and Learn coming up next month. Um, if you want to have a sandwich and learn um, if you're on track for retirement and some strategies that you might want to consider in regards to taxes, your Social Security, and your overall investments, free of charge there as well, uh, go to purefinancial.com. We'll be back in just a second. Chills called Your Money, Your Wealth. This is Your Money, Your Wealth on Talk Radio 760 KFMB. Hey, welcome back to the program. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Uh, my name's Joe Anderson. I'm a certified financial planner. I am with uh, Big Al Clopine. He is a CPA. Thanks for tuning in today um, or whatever day that you are turning in. Um, check our podcast out, purefinancial.com. You can go there or you can go to iTunes. Uh, go to Your Money, Your Wealth. Hey, you know, what's that with the TV show we did recently with um, the median savings of someone? Yes. Uh, it, here's what it was. It was uh, for 55-year-olds to 64, the median, which is the middle, half pe- people are above this and half of the people are below it. The median retirement savings is $12,000. And that's Twelve it. grand. Twelve grand. Now, if you throw out those that have no retirement savings, the median is a hundred thousand. But still, you got to count everybody. Everyone's got to retire and gonna gonna need some kind of retirement income. So half the people have above twelve thousand in that age group. Half the people have below twelve thousand dollars. Fifty-five to sixty-five years of age. Fifty-five to sixty-four. Yep. I mean, you would call that pre-retiree age. So, with that in mind, I got this from CNBC. Okay. These. Uh, Mistakes? No. You know, we are um, full swing in the Olympics. Yes. And the USA is just killing it. Yeah, last I saw, we had 100 medals already. Wow. What's the taxation on those medals? Well, interestingly enough, you know what? If you get a gold medal... What, the, it's like 25 grand they get, don't yeah, they? Yeah, the Olympic Committee gives you 25 grand, but you got to pay taxes on it, right? And if uh, it's a silver, it's uh, 15000 If it's a bronze, it's $10,000. So there's actually a bill right now, Joe, that uh, of, of trying to make it less uh, tax, uh, 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 less of a tax issue for these Olympic medal winners, because in a lot of cases they don't make a lot of money. Now, certainly some of them have great endorsements, but that's the that's rare. There's only a few that have sure. big endorsement contracts, and uh, so we'll see. We'll see what happens. It's like you know, you you work four years making virtually nothing. Right, just having a little stipend to pay your food, and then you w- get win a gold medal, twenty five thousand bucks, and now you got to pay taxes on it. Well, they're not going to pay taxes on it, though. Well, it depends because they don't have any income. That's probably their only source of income. Yeah. Well, they will. They will because what if they win a few, like four gold medals? Now it's a hundred grand, right? Now oh. they're paying some taxes. Sure. Well, then, well, can can all right? So can they write off all their training? Uh, they didn't. Well, they probably didn't pay for it. I think the Olympic Committee did. Oh. So it's just exposed. I suppose. Yeah. Plus, more than that, they got to pay for uh, the value of the gold medal. But it's not gold; it's silver. Well, but still, the gold medal they say is whatever's in it. It's it, not made of gold. I hear. I, I agree because <laughs> otherwise it'd be worth twenty five thousand or more. But the the gold medal is worth five hundred one dollars, and the silver medal is worth three hundred in terms of value. So you got to pay tax on that too. Huh? And the bronze medal. Has such a small value that they don't tax that. You know what I just read too when it comes to taxes is that there was what's what the the treasure trove tax. So there was this couple in Northern California walking, and then they find these tin cans, right? And it was filled with gold coins from like the 1900s. Okay. So for 10 million bucks. Really? Okay. It was on their property. Okay. Right? Sure. Pay, they got to pay tax on it. Yeah. Yeah. Because it's. It's found. it's it's a buried treasure in their backyard. It's found money. They got to pay tax on it. Yeah. So if I find if you, fifty bucks on the street, yeah, you got. I got I got to put that on my ten ten forty. You better report it. And if you don't, I'm calling the IRS on you. 
So that's ridiculous. <laughs> that's the, well, that's the rule, right? So people that hunt for treasures, once they find it, they do. They have to pay taxes on the value of it, right? And maybe it's heirlooms and so forth. Uh, so, but if I trip over a tin can in my backyard, I look and there's gold bars. Yeah, yeah. Right. I got to pay tax on that. Yes, you do. And yeah. then I just, this happened, I guess, how this all started was in the 60s. Right. And an individual bought a piano. Okay. And then they found like $40,000 or something like Inside that in, of it? in the yeah. piano. Right, right, right. right so right, someone right. was stashing yeah. some stuff. Yeah. Well, you got to take that call, Al? Uh, I mean, no. Are you yeah, sure? One, one of our callers. <laughs> are you sure? You, they, they got you, your private line? You can hear the buzz from there. <laughs> huh? It's vibrating the whole. You're checking your phone. <laughs> yeah. I was like, what, what is shaking. that? <laughs> so, speaking of lack of retirement savings, this is all coming together now. Oh, okay. Lack of retirement savings and sports. Okay. I'm going to combine these two. Right. All right. So, parents, when it comes to their children and how they're spending money on their children in regards to athletics, okay? Okay. How much do you think most parents spend on their children um, for athletics? For athletics, just kind of throughout their childhood? Mm -hmm. is that, I guess that's what it's referring to. Oh, I don't know. Five or ten grand, maybe. A year? No, no. Total. Oh, you want a year. For, like, f since when they were... Like, like yeah, a, like from two years old. No. Old. Parents spent $1,000 a month per <laughs> child. <laughs> what? 1000 bucks a month per child. This is TD Ameritrade. Did this oh, survey. Oh, my goodness. Okay? So they said one in five parents spent a uh, 1000 a month per child. Okay. All right? These parents admitted they are often pushing their own savings to the sidelines. 60% yes. of the parents of these children, athletes, have no emergency fund. Wow. Right? So their, their emergency fund is going for their children's athletics. Right. All right. A third of them are not contributing to any type of retirement account. 11% hmm. of them are cutting back on college savings, according to the survey. Sure. Well, they would because they're spending it on athletics. So maybe they're going for the athletic scholarship. Two-thirds of parents surveyed expected their kids will get an athletic scholarship. Yeah. That actually was a big topic in my neighborhood, and uh, I'm trying to think if anyone actually got one. I think one person did out of maybe eight kids. Yeah, so, right. Exactly. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's like I have three nephews. Yeah. And I was I'm pretty coordinated. Right. I guess it didn't go to my brother and my sister, <laughs> because if they think that these kids are going to get athletic scholarships, but that's what people think, you know. Right, they, right. I love my kids. Yeah. Hey, yeah. look at how good he is, and I'm looking. I'm like, dude, this he's not good. Right. He's awful. But, but I can't say that to him. I can say it to you. But it's like, what are they thinking? Here, I let's just, you know, oh, he's going to be, you know? Yeah, I mean, all the athletic stuff. I mean, so in, in my neighborhood, it's, of course, soccer. I mean, I guess a lot of neighborhoods, it's soccer. And, and it's club soccer, Joe. That's year round. And that's uh, that probably is that thousand bucks a month between uh, the cost of the club and the, the gear and whatever, the transportation. It's um, frightening. You know, so anyway, I mean, th th there's such a lack of information, education, right? It's, th I mean, everyone pushes the stuff off, and I get that procrastination. We can always save tomorrow. We'll catch up. We'll catch up. We'll catch up. Yeah, when when the kids are out of the home. When the kids are out of the home, I'll then say. that's when we'll really focus in on, you know, saving and for our they, retirement. And then they get done with grad school, and you're 64. It's like, okay, <laughs> I just have to work 20 more years. No, that's it. Right. That's <laughs> it. <laughs> Now back to your money, your wealth on Talk Radio 760 AFMB. Hey, welcome back to the program. Show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. Joe Anderson, Big Al. Thanks for tuning in. Go to purefinancial.com. Get a little bit more information about us. A lot of events coming up this fall. A lot of events. So go to purefinancial.com. Go to the Learning Center. Uh, we got a couple of webinars on there already. Medicare, identity theft. I don't know. A bunch of other stuff. <laughs> yeah, there's a, there's a tax one. I remember that because I did it. Oh, that's right. You did a tax one. I think you got like four views. <laughs> I'm waiting for the fifth. Please, someone watch it. <laughs> like it. Please <laughs> like it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. Um, Compliance-wise, we are kidding about the like. Please do not like it. <laughs> that's right. We got in trouble, didn't we? You we're, can't not, we're not yeah, allowed you to can't say you're asking can... people to like your stuff because it's I, awful. First yeah, of all, well, that's it's just bad for business. <laughs> But more importantly, it's a compliance nightmare. Yes. I, I, it's like, Alan, you can't tell I people made, to I like made, your Facebook page. I made two mistakes in one second. <laughs> yeah, it's just blown up. <laughs> you get shut down. 
Oh, Gosh, you're right. We got that memo this week. We can't say that anymore. So just <laughs> just watch just watch, watch it, it and whatever. <laughs> whatever you want to do after that, you're on your own. Yeah. I can't guide I, you any direction after that. I don't know what that. you would do or not, but just watch it. How oh, stupid is this? <laughs> oh. oh, man. Well, Joe, I got something from um, a little study put on by Putnam Investments. Oh, okay. and uh, That's a it's Apple actually, mutual fund company. Yeah, it is, but it's pretty interesting. So they, they used a portfolio that invested 60% in stocks, 30% in bonds, 10% in cash, and assuming the investment performance matched long-term historic levels. And they don't really say in this article what that means, but so f- just you know whatever historical for that kind of portfolio. Speaking of Putnam, yes. first year in the business, right? Yeah. So 20 years old, 22, whatever. I yeah. forget how old I was, 23, 24, whatever. So first client is my dad. Yeah. <laughs> right? You put him in Putnam? <laughs> oh, oh. So here's what I thought my job was. It's like, okay, well, here, let's just do all this research and find, you know, really good funds. Right? Yeah, okay. And so the wholesaler comes into the office, right? Yeah. Nice guy. Hey, look at these great funds. Oh, they're, they're off the charts. Uh, yeah, I don't know my head from where, you know yeah. what? Right? So I'm sitting there, and it's like, wow, this guy's really smart. He, yeah, he, he, he can predict the future and everything else. <laughs> and so it was like the new opportunities fund. Got it. Right? Yeah. And this is 1998. Okay. Okay. 1998. You yeah. know what was going on in 1998, oh, 1999? Sure. Dot com bus. Oh coming. God! You look at those returns, and I'm like, Dad. You can get 20 percent. Yeah. My dad gives me 30 grand. Yeah. Right. He's like, Here you go. First account. Boom. <laughs> New ops. I'm like, Look at these returns. They're up like 40 percent. I'm, I'm so smart. And, and my dad's like, Well, you know, you know, just you know, something stable. You yeah. know, five to six percent. Yeah. Cal- yeah. Cal- calm down, son. And I was like, Oh, psh, Dad, you don't know what you're talking about. I am a financial <laughs> advisor. I've had years of training. <laughs> Look, at, I've had days of training. <laughs> and I just sat through this wholesaler selling me on this fund, and you have to have it. Right. Thing blew up. I think it was worth like 12 grand <laughs> in about a year and a half. Oh, boy. Yeah. And, and that you, was the last 30000 my father ever Yeah, that, was it. that were, was it. You had to get someone who wasn't a relative. <laughs> right. Yeah, my dad just spread the r- r- <laughs> my, yeah, my son, this is going to last maybe six months. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. Yeah, yeah. About 20 years later. Well, yeah, he's thinking you're going to move back home, so he wasn't going to give you any more investment right, dollars. Right, I needed he that needs... $1,000 yeah. a month to, get yeah. to play some sports. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Kindle your basketball career. Yes, exactly. <laughs> anyway, so this study, Joe, this, um, this, this, now the, uh, an investor withdrawing 5% savings every year. Now, that's a little bit rich, uh, but that's what they did. But here's the first one, is paying no taxes at all, which is unrealistic, but, but follow the logic here. That uh, individual had a 77% chance of making their money last for 30 years. Okay? So, taking 5% out? Taking 5% out. Paying no tax. Oh, okay. okay. Zero tax. 5%. Now, now, if you're in the 15% tax bracket, the odds of your money, money lasting drop to 58%. Okay? If you're in the 25% bracket, the odds fell to 44%. In other words, there, it was more likely than not that you would run out of money. And, Joe, that is simply why we spend a lot of time on this show <laughs> talking about taxes, because a lot of people don't really think about it, do they? You know, None. And, I mean, yeah. and then here's the industry, too. It's like, okay, well, here, you know, the tax deduction today, and no offense to the CPA community, love you, Big Al. <laughs> Please, right? be careful. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm uh, You're armed with yeah, the, the whole herd of yeah. <laughs> followers <laughs> that like you. <laughs> I, yeah, I'm feeling a little bit off today, so be gentle. But, but no, so here's what I, how I look at it. I look at real life. Versus, you know, and of course I get into the numbers and into the weeds and everything else. Sure. But if you look at maybe a little bit bigger picture here, right? Yeah. And you say, all right, well, does it make sense to pay a little bit more tax today and then have tax-free income when you're retired? Or does it make sense to get the deduction today and pay taxes in retirement, right? Sure. So that is a broad statement. Right. For a lot of individuals, yes, it's going to make sense to take the tax deduction today and then and have the taxes coming out because most people haven't saved any money. That's right. So you, you in other words, you put the money into the four hundred one k when you're in a higher bracket. You retire, you haven't saved that much. All you got is a little bit of retirement plus social security. You're in a low bracket. Right. That's you're right. I mean, if you look, that's at the just, majority, just standard. But now, not our listeners. Our not listeners the, not are our different. clients. Not our listeners. Correct. Is that our listeners have saved money? Right. Or else they potentially probably wouldn't be listening to a financial planning show. Right. Or they're going to save money. Yes. As, or they're as going as a, to save. They have the aspirations to have some yes. net worth. Right. Right. <clears throat> and so then you look at it. It's like, okay, well, here, wouldn't you rather have tax-free income in retirement? 
how much longer is your money going to go, right? And then when do you need the money the most? Right. In retirement, yeah, right? And then it's not like, no, just go all Roth and convert everything willy-nilly. No, I mean, if you've listened to the show for any period of time, it's coming up with more complex strategies to figure out exactly what you need to do to make sure that you have that tax diversification in retirement. I agree. That means so much more, in my opinion, than what the overall portfolio looks like. I don't care what you're in. As long as you have a tax-efficient strategy, if you're in halfway decent investments, you're going to go that much farther. Because each year on your distribution, if you're paying 25% versus 15 or 33% versus 25 come on. I mean, you could do the math. I mean, that's a significant tax alpha that you're generating for yourself because you, that's one thing you can't control is the tax. We can't control markets, interest rates, inflation, anything else. I wish we could, but we can't. Well, and if you look at this example, so it's it's probably unreal, unrealistic to pay no taxes, although some people can, and we can sort of get into how to do that. But 25% tax bracket means you pull $100,000 out of your IRA and you pay $25,000 in tax. So it's kind of like, Joe, every single year your portfolio goes down 25%, 25% every single year. And that's why we say in, in many cases the taxes that you end up paying is actually even more significant than some temporary portfolio losses. And right. so many people focus on the investments in the portfolio and did I get did I get seven percent or I should have got eight or whatever the number is. Right. And yet they're pulling out of their IRA and, and plus twenty five percent is federal. You got California and now you're paying another nine percent on top of that. So you're about thirty five percent or so in taxes. And it's, it's almost like your portfolio goes down 35% every single year. Right. I mean, the, the amount of the distribution. It's like, come on. Yeah, you're absolutely right. It's like, okay, well, here. Well, I should have done this. Or, oh, man, man the market's down a little bit, so I want to get out. And then you're just losing more rate of return. And the, the focus is there where the focus should be on tax. Yeah. No. And of course, you should have a globally diversified portfolio. You should have a portfolio that's geared for your specific goals. You absolutely need to rebalance and tax manage the overall account. You need to have a portfolio that's really geared to creating the retirement income that you're looking for long term. But if you're ignoring the tax, let's say you have the best portfolio manager, you have the best advisor, or you're the smartest person in the world. It doesn't matter if you keep paying all that money unnecessarily to the tax. Yeah, you actually have a partner, the IRS, and in California, the Franchise Tax Board, or whatever state that you're in. Most states have a tax system. And it's uh, for, for many people, it's not surprising, but other people it is. The taxes don't stop when your paycheck does. When you start tapping your retirement nest egg, it comes with all sorts of new rules, but also opportunities if you understand how to create tax-free income. So think about this. Instead of contributing to tax-deferred plans that reduce your taxes, you start tapping those savings for income and paying taxes at your regular rates. So as you near retirement, tax planning becomes more important than ever. But you must use a forward-thinking tax strategy. You can't look at one year at a time. You've got to look at 20, 30 years to figure out what the best strategies are for you because you have more control over paying taxes in retirement, actually more than any other time in your life. Now back to your money, your wealth on Talk Radio 760 KFMB. Welcome back to the show. The show's called Your Money, Your Wealth. My name's Joe Anderson. I'm a certified financial planner with Big Al Quilpine. He's a CPA. Thanks for tuning in. A lot of events coming up this fall. Uh, so go to purefinancial.com. We're doing some lunch and learns last Wednesday of the month. Road to retirement. Look at that. I like phrase. it. Yeah. I'm sure someone else is using that. <laughs> And I apologize if we stole it from you, uh, but it's, road to retirement. I like it. It's so uh, it's I an mean, introductory um, course. So is it what like different things, different steps that you got to consider before you retire? Yes. Mm -hmm. How okay. much money do you need? Sure. So because if you look at it like this, it's like all right, <clears throat> you want to spend a certain dollar figure on an annual basis, right? Yeah. And so it's like oh, if I want to spend this dollar figure, 50,000 a year, 100,000 a year, 200,000 a year, whatever it is, right? So that's the goal. That's where you start with and then you have to say, "All right, well, how much money do I need to make sure that I can provide myself with 50,000, 100,000 or 200,000 or 10,000 of income per year?" Yeah, and you know what? That's as you say it that way, it sounds pretty straightforward, right? right? So you got so, so few people do that. Right. It's like, okay, well, here, I, this is what I want to spend. How much money do I need to make sure that I can do that? So we go through that exercise, right? And then we look at, all right, well, here, if you want to spend $50,000 a year, all right, well, how much is going to come as Social Security? 
So that's your fixed income. So you have to make sure that you understand what's going to come to you as a guaranteed income source. Do you have a pension? Do you have Social Security? Do you have um, maybe a real estate portfolio that's giving you income? Whatever it is, you want to make sure that you calculate that because that's the fixed income source that's going to help provide that $50,000 of income. Then you're going to have a shortfall of some sort, potentially. That one needs to come from your savings. So if you do not have enough money saved up to cover that shortfall, well, there's different things that you can do, right? You can work longer, you can save more, or you can try to increase that fixed income number. And that could be Social Security. It's probably Social Security for most of you. So how do you increase that? Well, you delay it. You delay it because that's going to give you an 8% delayed retirement credit from your full retirement age to age 70. Then you look at, all right, well, still I still don't have enough. How else can I maneuver this puzzle around to make sure that I can get close? Well, then we go to taxes, right? Because if you can reduce the amount of money that you pay in tax, that's more money to you. So we talk about different levers, right, of what you need to, to, to consider in regards to an overall strategy. We get into, you know, how Social Security tax and so on. So everything that we've talked about on the show, what we're trying to do is get a little bit more... Um, intimate, I guess, with you, just to kind of show you exactly on pen and paper what you need to do. So go to our website. It's Road to Retirement. We're going to start that l last Wednesdays of every month. It's a lunch and learn. I think we're going to limit it to only 20 people uh, per class. Uh, so 45 minutes. It's going to be short, quick, and easy. You'll get a workbook and things like that, and we'll, we'll ship you on your way. So uh, go to purefinancial.com, learn more about that. we got webinars and all sorts of good stuff. So that sounds fantastic. It is fantastic, Alan. <laughs> it is very fantastic. You know uh, Speaking of taxes, Joe, yes. uh, when we're trying to reduce taxes in retirement, I think probably one of the first things you got to consider is knowing your tax bracket. Yep. Because there are different brackets. There's a 10% bracket, 15, 25, 28, 33, 35, and 39.6. And uh, then... There's, if, if that's not tough enough, then there's alternative minimum tax, which usually kicks in around uh, when you're in the 28% bracket. But the reason why it's so important to know your bracket is that's how you can start to figure out an income distribution plan in retirement. For example, uh, for a married couple, roughly the first $75,000 of taxable income is taxed at the 15% bracket or lower. And then you say, all right, well, I need $100,000 of income. And since some of it comes from pension, let's just make it real simple. So that's, say, $40,000 comes from pension. So I'm, I'm short $60,000 to make to be able to spend $100,000. I got to take $60,000 from my portfolio to make this work. From somewhere. From somewhere, right? And so then it's like, well, and I'm, I'm going to keep this real simple. I'm not going to worry about deductions and exemptions and these kinds of things. But $40,000 is pension. That's ordinary income. Maybe I take another what, $35,000 from my IRA, 401k, that gets me to $75,000 of taxable income. And then I take the last $25,000 either from my non-qualified account, and I'm careful on tax less harvesting so I don't have gains, or maybe I take it from my Roth IRA, which is tax-free. So I am effectively living in a 25% tax bracket, but I'm only paying 15% tax. And that's kind of, I think, step number one when you're in retirement is coming up with that income distribution plan, having some knowledge of your tax bracket to know how much to take from each kind of account. Yeah. It's, and I would say that is step one before you get to the portfolio again. I would agree. Yeah. Right. It's yeah. like, okay, well here, I need to distribute $50,000 a year for my portfolio on top of my pension and social security and real estate income, whatever. So then you're looking at, okay, well that $50,000, where's it going to come from? You first have to take a look at not necessarily what investment you're going to pull from, but how's it going to be taxed? Right. If it comes from a retirement account, it's ordinary in income. If it comes from a Roth account, it's tax-free. If it comes from your brokerage account, it's cap gains. So you look and say, all right, well here, I want to mitigate the tax as much as I can. So let's look at the tax return. Let's look at the deductions, exclusions, exemptions. Can we reduce or can we increase those, right? So if you have to pull money from your retirement account, you can keep yourself in those lower brackets and then only maybe distribute a, a smaller amount from your Roth IRA or your other accounts. So th that's the kind of the science of the income strategy. Then you get into the investments. It's like, okay, well now how do I create that income? Do I look at dividend paying stocks? Do I look at value stocks, growth stocks? Stocks, small companies, international emerging markets, all of the above is what you should be looking at. You know, then that's where you where people will always get bogged up though. It's like, well, here I don't want to invest in internationally because of Brexit. 
Right? It's like, are you kidding me? I mean, this is a 25-year retirement income strategy that you need. This is going to be a blimp on the radar. Focus on things that you can't control. How much you're paying in fees and costs. What is your true risk to the overall portfolio? And the most important, I believe, is taxes. Right? How much tax are you paying needlessly to the IRS? If you have a strategy up front, potentially you can save significant dollars long term. I just, um, real hypothetical examples. I'm um, helping a gentleman out. He's got about 1.6 million, single guy, and a lot of it, he's got about, I don't know, $600,000 in his retirement account and about a million dollars outside. And he doesn't spend a lot of money, single, uh, no deductions, um, just the standard deductions, um, mortgage is paid for. And uh, real s simple guy, hey, Joe, I just I need $30,000 a year. Sure. 60 years old, right? So the strategy we came up with is that we're able potentially, you know, just looking at the numbers, and of course, the tax law is probably going to change and things like that. But given current tax law, we were able to convert all of his money by the time he turns age 70, roughly, and still stay in those 15% tax levels. Sure. Right? So we're building up those brackets. Some years we had to go to the 25. But if we didn't do anything at all, right, his required distribution in 10 years is going to be roughly, let's call it $40,000 plus his Social Security because he was going to push his Social Security out. So now you're looking at seventy, eighty thousand dollars $80,000 of income, right, fixed. Right, for the rest of his life. For the rest of his life. So as a single taxpayer, that's put him in the 25% tax bracket. And who knows what's going to happen here in November. Easily, that could be twenty eight. Right, so we found a way to basically convert most of this stuff out within the 15% tax bracket. Right, he can live off his non-qualified investments. Right, so he's staying in that 15, and then once he hits 70, right now he takes his Social Security, and then everything basically is coming from a Roth and a non-qualified account. His RMD is a lot lower because there's not that much left in that retirement account. Now his tax bracket is his effective rate is probably. 8%. Yeah. You know what I mean? It's unbelievable, Joe. And, and unfortunately, the advice that people are getting is defer, 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 defer. You retire and you live off your non-qualified assets, your non-retirement assets, your tax rate is zero. You're thinking this is no problem, no taxes in retirement. And then you hit 70 and a half. As you say, your required minimum distribution kicks in and your Social Security, if you delayed it to 70, which you're allowed to do, now all of a sudden you're in a big tax bracket for the rest of your life. And you could have been doing Roth conversions Don't while you're in super low tax brackets. It's one of the biggest misses and also one of the best strategies there is out there, Joe, because... It's all about taking control over how much you pay in taxes, but a lot of folks don't really feel like they have much control. They've never really thought about it. They've, 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 they've diligently worked and saved, and whatever the tax was, they paid it. But man, when it comes to retirement, you've got lots of control over your taxes, and, but you're probably not getting this advice, as I mentioned from your current advisor, because it's, it's not necessarily their expertise. There is a way to do this, though. You've got to have a forward-looking tax-efficient strategy.